So first of all, I want to thank everyone who made time out of their very busy schedules to join us today. It's been kind of a crazy couple of weeks between budget discussions and budget backlash, between new science and innovation that is coming and moving through our community, and lots of other exciting things that you're going to hear about today. Just as a quick show of hands, how many of the people in this room work in the life science industry? Show of hands. How many people in this room benefit from the life science industry? Show of hands. That's right. Bio is life. If it's alive, it was alive, or it keeps things alive. That's our job. We are the industry that is taking care of children. We are the industry that is helping to feed the world. We are the industry that will come up with new substances and new industrial materials that will allow our planet to be more sustainable and our economy to be more sustainable too. One of the things that I found really interesting, and my husband thought that I had lost my mind. Well, that happens a lot. But in this case, I was watching the State of the Union address. And as a Republican, I usually don't do a happy dance during the State of the Union address. Um, but all of a sudden, I was going, oh my gosh, this is incredible. This is amazing. The president was putting a national focus on personalized or precision medicine. Why is that important? Why is it critical that we are able to detect disease early? Why is it critical that we are able to know what drugs will work for what patients at what time during their treatment? Why is it important to understand patterns that affect different patients so that we can address the biggest global economic issue that is facing all of us, which is the rising cost of healthcare? All of those answers, all of those opportunities are at our fingertips. We will live to see many of those questions answered. And it's the people in this room, both the scientists and also the business people that support them, that allow that and will enable that to happen. I also am so thrilled to see that members of our patient advocacy community are here today. Conquering cancer, finding solutions, finding answers requires dedication and partnership with patients. And we are truly, truly appreciative for all that they have done. And for those of you that work on behalf of patients on a volunteer or professional capacity in our advocacy organizations or as part of those organizations, would you please stand and be recognized? Marcia, that's you. Your team, come on. Brian, I know you're here. Christian. Thank you, you can be seated. You've heard me talk so many times about from discovery to development to delivery. Everything we do, everything we work to discover, everything we work to develop does absolutely no good until it helps patients. However, if we hamstring our discovery and development process, we won't get there. We saw this year um, Senator Dial and Representative Robson step up and advocate for a billion dollars in research infrastructure at our universities. That project did not get built into the budget, which means 
that we have some work to do. Because if we don't invest in innovation, if we don't invest in research, if we don't make the case for making Arizona a global player on the journey of life science innovation from discovery to development to delivery, so much of the work that we have done, so much of the investments that we have made will start to slow down instead of accelerate. And I know that for the people in this room, that is not acceptable. So um, we will be talking to you throughout the summer. We will be talking to you throughout the fall. We'll be getting ready for the next legislative session. And that means that when I send out a call for letters, I run a letter from every person in this room. And I'm not kidding. And when we talk about how we can collaborate by sharing data or putting things together, which is a hallmark of our community, when, that, when Arizona's collaborative gene kicks in, we can do anything. And it's time for us to kick it into high gear. So with that, um, I want to thank our sponsors. Um, many of you were able to, to be here today thanks to the support of our sponsors. I'd like to recognize the team from Cox Business. Um, if it was not for them, many of you would not have had the opportunity to come today. And I want to thank them publicly. And um, they are at this table. When you see them, please say thank you also. Cox, raise your hand. I won't make you stand up. We also have with us today a number of members from the AZ Bio Board of Directors. I am going to make you stand up. So AZ Bio Board members, please stand up. Jim, that's you. Shelby? So as we move forward, there are some amazing things. We're going to start the discussion today. You're going to have some time to have some discussion in just a moment at your tables. And then on April 29th, we are going to continue the discussion from discovery to development to delivery by focusing the entire day at the AZ Bio Expo on clinical trials. So if you want to understand and join the conversation on how we fund clinical trials, how we attract more clinical trials to Arizona, how we can work with patient advocacy groups better to enhance our clinical trials environment in Arizona, and equally important, hear from some amazing researchers who are working with patients today to make it happen. So I hope you'll join us in April. You'll find information in your programs. I hope you enjoy today's program. But most importantly, I hope that today activates your collaborative gene so that together we can do things that are Arizona amazing.